AIDS Wolf at Dub Narcotics Studio, October 2010. Thanks for taking the time here to uh, talk to our studio audience. And what? What's it all about? What is? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well. Yes. Now, Bob. Bob was very. Uh, Bob was very meticulous in his preparation for your session here. Okay. This is hard to get all three of you, and maybe. Maybe you should come here. You guys, why don't you come down here and, and be, be more cozy? Let's be cozy. Or you could, oh, okay. It's cozy. Yeah, it's cozy. All right. Cozy to any kitty. Are you, um, this is nice. This is a little more. No, oh, that's good, you guys. Very yeah. good. <clears throat> yes, now Bob had, uh, had things very meticulously arranged for the AIDS Wolf session. Um. And it sounded good. I was upstairs for a lot of it. I thought it sounded quite um, thunderous. It was very easy. Yeah, yeah. Bob got the drum sound that we wanted within the first 15 minutes. Yeah, it was pretty fast. That was shocking. Huh. So. And that kind of set the tone. Yeah. It was smooth sailing right from the word go. Yes. Yeah. And even the bass sound was uh, pretty right on. I thought you didn't have a bass. Well, the guitar, the guitar bass, bass cabinet. Ah. Guitar slash bass. This is a bass string on the top. Yeah. Could be more polyvalent. Why, why do you play together as, as the three of you? Why, why are you, why are you collaborating? It's a uh, long are very long story. in Montreal. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't mean why do you do start. Why do you continue? Why do you play together? Oh, because I guess we have uh, a mission. A mission, kind of similar hopes and endeavors in terms of music writing, composition, interests. You know, uh, I was reading uh, this article uh, on uh, John Cage, uh, and one of the, the quotes from the article was that uh, he took the path of the most resistance and uh, I felt that that quote resonated to, uh, to what we're trying to do. That's certainly, you're in the right place then, Dominic Cox to you. There's no resistance here. There's no resistance. So if we took the John Cage room, we would have recorded in San Diego. <laughs> Ah, at the studio of most resistance. <laughs> well, Maybe. before you move in the gear, you gotta move all these boulders out of the track. Hmm. This is the studios. This is the studios in San Diego. Heard of it? <laughs> <laughs> they make you push all your amps up a never-ending incline. Hmm. That's before they start even. You have to run cables around the building. <laughs> That's sad. It's hard. <coughs> That's why we came here. Then you have 40 we were feeling stairs. tired. Do you remember playing the show at 21 Grand with Monotonics? Yeah. I wasn't in the you band. Wasn't a band. So, you don't re so you don't remember it? No. I remember it. Oh, okay. yeah, I do too. I checked it out on YouTube. That was a sweaty gig. It's on YouTube. Do you feel that, um, do you feel that, uh, had you seen Monotonics yes. before that? Yeah. Someone got into a garbage can. We had been playing with Monotonics. We had been playing for since Austin. Ah. Uh. So we had already seen yeah. them. So you were five crying. nights in a row. We were we were real yeah. well versed. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. We were becoming experts on Monotonics. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> quite, quite. Do you feel that um, it's an appropriate double bill? Uh, it got people going. <laughs> That's an interesting question because I feel that most billings that involve our band are not exactly appropriate. Really, what what's inappropriate? What do you, how do you what you feel would be appropriate? That's a tough question. Usually, things tend to be more socially appropriate than anything else. 
-hmm. And you felt that the monotonics were socially inappropriate. No, I thought they were socially appropriate. We got along with them really well. Yes. In fact, Ami uh, let us stay at his house when we toured in Israel. Yeah. He wasn't even there. Hmm. Just left us the keys. That was cool. Hmm. Uh, well, what's appropriate? Like, like sonically? Like, I don't know. Yeah. You, yeah, you yeah, used the word appropriate, and I'm asking you to define it in this context. Mm. You know, I think it has to be challenging a little bit. That's for mm. sure. In terms of um, writing, I think it has to be intentional intellectually stimulating that all the bands on the bill provide some kind of you know, stimulus to people. Do you think that yeah. the those those fellows from XBX or X on the bill were, were appropriate? Oh yeah, they did put on a really good show that night for sure. Also really respect those three guys as uh, as musicians. So it was a pretty wild night because everyone all all those three bands were just Out of control. You guys were out of control. Out of control. Um, monotonics were really trying to be out of control, but they, they had a hard time matching your fervor. Well, they're a different type of out of control. Yeah, yeah. Were you out of control? You, you were running all over the place in a bodysuit. That's true. Yeah. That was the a body suit people thing. were trying to capture you, but you wouldn't. <laughs> I don't let anyone catch me. No. You were kind of out of control. I might have had a cold that day. <laughs> <coughs> I was scared of you. Well, let me ask you this then. Um, is this going to be a collaboration that people can look forward to for years to come? This AIDS-Wolf situation that we're looking at right now? As, as, as the three of us? As You've got this Anglo guy. I think we, <laughs> I think we still have a fair amount to say. As a we have some right ideas now. left, left in our head. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Hmm. Especially if we get to keep recording in places like this. I always like admire like the Dead Sea because they're a band that like were never popular. But From New Zealand. Yeah. They just keep doing it and keep Ball putting out down. records, and yeah. then they have like careers and do their thing, and kind of like they went through a period where they practiced once a year. <laughs> <laughs> Nihilus Spasm bands like that. Those dudes are in the seventies. Bill Jamin. I think those are good models to, you know, like base yourself doing on. really out there music. You know? and doing it for a long in time in London, Ontario, of all places, and being able to like step away and take a little break mm -hmm. and then go back to it. I really, I mean, I love the Dead Sea's music, but I'm really excited by the fact that they're like a bunch of older gents who all had like professional careers and kept coming back to it. I think that's pretty like cool. Charles Eves. Who? He, Charles Eves, he was an insurance salesman, but oh. he was also a composer. Oh. oh. True. Uh, and you are going to Minneapolis to meet up with D. Ryder. Uh, D. D. Ryder. Yeah. yeah. And how many shows are you playing with them? Oh, D. Ryder, like six. Seven Is there shows? more than that? Something like Have that. Have you oh. seen them play be before? We've never no. seen them play. We're Would super. I'm super excited. Really. Really excited. To see them. To see them oh, yeah. for several nights. That's why we wanted to tour with them because we wanted to be able to see them for several nights. Yeah. Also to hang out with Todd, mm -hmm. who's and like a the other dudes unicorn we guitar know. playing. Mm -hmm. We don't know the other dudes. We just no. know Todd. It's kind of his thing. Like he's the main guy. He writes the songs. 